Here we are, 2,227 duelists, cut down to 397, and then now here we are in the final round where we are going to make that final cut to the top 64. Without further ado, let's bring on our duelists. We have Jakob from Denmark. Hi. Welcome. Hi, I'm Jacob. Sorry, Jacob. It's all good. I'm sure you've been called Jakob before, right? It's incredibly hard to hear you. Sorry. I'm sure you've been called Jakob before. Yeah. It's all okay, good. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Tell, tell me uh, a little bit about the community in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, it's a quite small one. It's pretty close. It's nice, but... You guys work together to, to decide your deck for the tournament? Yeah. Did you, did you think you were going to do this well uh, in the tournament? No. Uh, no? Before the tournament, it's always, if you do well, it's nice, but there's a lot of variance in Yu-Gi-Oh, so you just have to take the chances you get. Well, good luck. You've, you've done pretty well so far. Please take a seat. And our other contestant is Quinton from France. Come on in. Oh, I like, I like. Yeah. The audience just scared me for a second. Do you want to say hello to the fans? Yeah, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just a friend, uh, a bunch of friends of mine, just because, like, uh, of course, the uh, West is a huge event, and we, like, for the, like, some of them, is the first one, so it's kind of cool, great event, great experience, uh, a lot of decks, like, very, like, so much, like, uh, different decks, uh, so you, it's really, like, so cool. T tell me a little bit about the Llama. Oh, about, sorry? Oh, yeah, uh, the Llama, uh, basically, it's a team from France called the Empire Llama, uh, and our, t our teammate, uh, our boss, actually, is uh, here. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of team of friends with like uh, some experience, great or, or bad, and yeah, um, so so cool to be like uh, one of them and to be proud of just like having their colors on me. That's really cool. Okay, all right, please take a seat. Have you guys decided who is going first? Okay, so Jacob is going first. Nailed it. Okay, over to our commentators. This time we have a special guest. Marcello, take it away and introduce our guest. Welcome to the last round of Swiss for YCS 2020. As Luke was saying, we're joined here by Typhoon. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling fine. I'm not that nervous, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, interesting to have uh, some players. I can, uh, of course, came uh, just like you from the competitive uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh side, but it's always good to have uh, some insight uh, from uh, players that just uh, do so well. So for anyone not knowing you, you have been playing a lot. You're from Germany, of course, and you have quite a lot of success. So. Uh, and another reason why uh, we decided to have you here is because, as we will see, uh, one of these guys is playing the same deck that you used for this event. Can you tell us more about it? So, uh, for this event I played the Rocket Strategy that won the UDS last week. Uh, the players are already starting, so uh, Jacob, who's going first right now, is playing the Orcus deck. And his opponent is playing Burning Abyss. Yeah, so it's uh, definitely an interesting one, and this YCS basically showed us that all of these players, huge field, more than 2,000 players, a lot of different decks. And it's cool to see that we still, the last round of Swiss, have Burning Abyss against Rocket. It's going to be an interesting one, but it all comes down to this. For one of these guys, the tournament is over. For one of them, they will advance to top 64 and try and win the event. Let's not talk anymore, let's go to the match. Okay, so we can take a look at these ends. Nice hand shake, and uh, Jacob is gonna start. What do you think of his end? Uh, his end is really well he, because he has one Rocket Monster and Epsil Router Dragon. That's already the two card full combo. So with that hand, he could already summon his field of. Heretic Seal, Abomination, Savage Dragon. Yeah, so and it's he, nice that he also has the Levianir Art Drone without needing to search for yeah, it. Yeah, he can either use it on turn one to rip a card mm -hmm. out of uh, Quentin's hand, shuffle it into the deck, or he can just keep it as a follow-up play for his next turn. Fair enough. Uh, it's it definitely was a surprise when uh, Shunping won uh, last weekend, uh, but you were telling me about the fact that Many people disregarded the deck, even though it won. Yes, so uh, it won the event last week, but out of all my opponents in the first day, only one knew the rocket yeah, cards. Exactly. So the other people simply didn't prepare for this deck, and it yeah. really shows because we have, still have a lot of rockets in the tournament. 
Absolutely, and uh, last round we were walking through some of the top tables and we saw uh, Simony, e, a very famous player, losing to actually a very young player uh, who is also piloting the rocket strategy. We didn't feature him because he's guaranteed top cut, but maybe later on we will be able to see more from this deck. So. so let's go to the game itself. So he's doing his guard dragon plays and if you look at the arrows they're really odd because LP is pointing to Striker Dragon and summons to the zone Striker Dragon points to, so it's a yep. little triangle. Um, Striker Dragon is one of the key cards of the Rocket Archetype, but you can actually use it with any level 4 lower Dragon monster. And it searches the field spell from Rockets, which is basically a Will of the Salaman Great, yep. but for two cards. It's pretty important and uh, it is what makes this deck one of the best because it's just like the link one monster pretty much gives you a lot of consistency in the deck so instead of summoning the red eyes darkness metal dragon with lp he summoned um, yeah the is. small red eyes card instead i think it's red eyes metal dragon yeah which, uh, which allows you searches search for it. the big one and this way he can use all of his guard dragons without blocking his zones yeah interesting approach to the deck uh, Something not so usual about uh, such a combo deck is the entrops. Like he's using, uh, I think, uh, almost 10 entrops in his main deck. Yeah, the core engine of the deck is very small. You yeah. only need 30 cards, roughly. And all your combos start with one or two cards with this card. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to discard for Dragon Ravine. So you can fill up your deck with hand traps or Cosmic Cyclone, stuff like that. And he makes like, the going second matchup a lot better in general. So it's uh so what he's doing here right now, he's using Quad Borrel's effect to destroy his own Link monster, which allows him to special summon up to two different rocket monsters from his graveyard. And if a rocket monster special summon while the Lingerous Dragon is in the graveyard, he can just summon it back as a free Link material, but it will be banished after that. What do you think is the counter to this deck? Like, what Antrop uh, he fears the most, like Nibiru? Uh, the or? best hand trap against this deck is by far Nibiru. Yeah. So Nib you can just hold it until they summon Savage Ring. Right now, you have to Nibiru them. Yeah. That's the point where you have to do it. Don't do it earlier, don't do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. nice, uh, nice advice. So you listen from Typhoon first. If you have Nibiru against this deck, just try and hold it for the effect, is now it would be negated by it. So. So the cool interaction this deck has with Nibiru is that Heavenly Spheres summons a dragon out of your deck no matter how it's tributed. So it's a, if it's tributed for Kaiju or for Nibiru, it will still summon a dragon. And what happened a lot of time in the tournament for me, that my opponents would Nibiru me very early on and afterwards I could still full combo them. So I otk through Nibiru, I made full combo through Nibiru because they didn't know when to use it. Yeah, that's correctly. definitely a useful uh, thing to keep in mind. Do you agree with the Levian here, or in general, in a blind matchup, or would you keep it here? Um, I think I would keep it in a blind matchup because uh, if you play against back row decks, this deck doesn't really have that many ways to pop back row except Unchained Abomination. Mm -hmm. But if he is afraid of maybe a combo deck or Mystic Mine, he could also yeah. just use the Vienna right now. It seems like he is going to pay off uh, in this case. And uh, In the end phase, he gets to summon one card with Silver Rocket. Mm -hmm. And this is also really... And he also banished one of Quentin's extra deck monsters. I didn't quite catch which one yeah, he banished. Uh, I think it could be Cherubini. He's slightly off camera, but yeah. And with the Ash Blossom in hand, uh, it's like even more than you need. Uh, so Unchained Abomination, Quentin is reading it right now, and I'm very sure that a lot of our viewers don't know what it does. Yeah, so we can bring it up uh, for you guys on screen, as you can see. So um, it's a Link monster that can pop up to three cards in a turn. So in each end phase, it destroys a card on the field, and he just uses it to target his own Silver Rocket. But it also destroys a card whenever a monster is destroyed by battle or if a card is activated that destroys cards on the field. So he can trigger it with his own rocket tracer in Quentin's turn as a quick effect. Yeah, and it works uh, extremely well with cards like Red Reboot as well. If you don't go for a game, you can just destroy yes, a lot of cards. Yes, you can just destroy three to four back rows per turn. Uh, 
do you think like he can have any chance of breaking this? It seems like very hard, right? Uh, if we look at Quentin Sand, he does have access to a lot of monsters where yeah. the danger cards and also um, the Strudo. But but he's playing just the one copy of Cherubini, so I would be surprised if that wasn't uh, banished, but we can't quite tell. Yeah, so the Burning Abyss strategy right now results all around level 3 monsters, but if your Cherubini is gone, you lose access to your Burning Abyss cards because you can't search them yeah. out of your deck. So he see really seems to be struggling for an Absolutely. opening play. Was there any reason just like scooping up before revealing like your extra deck to your opponent? It's something that I think, yeah, as you can see. So yeah. uh, Jacob takes game one quite significantly, but again, we are thinking about that. It is something that probably uh, the average player wouldn't think of, but I think it's very knowledgeable. Like if your opponent doesn't know what you're playing, but you're obviously going to lose to that, I think it's very important to consider just preventing information, right? Yeah, so the decision he had to make right there was maybe his opponent doesn't know the burning of his strategy, strategy that well, yeah. so he might banish a wrong card, like maybe a wall sword dragon True. That's fair or enough. something else. And if he has access to that Cherubini, he can still win against a field yeah. like that. But um, I, he also didn't know what Abomination does, so maybe he just wasn't aware how good this field actually Probably. is. Probably. It seems like he didn't know the deck that well, but regardless, uh, I think game one was uh, a lot based on uh, the role there, because differently from uh, Jacob, Royer is not meaning any entrap. So uh, now, though, the side decks are going to change it, but you spoiled for me in uh, the <laughs> background that uh, Jacob also has a lot of side deck cards, right? Yeah, so after siding, he can take out the hand traps that are suboptimal against this matchup for a lot of going second cards. And so Quentin does not have any cards he could side in going first. Maybe yeah. Twin Twist is for, red, uh, for the Mystic Mind, but nothing else. So yeah, he, I mean. he's playing a 40 card combo and deck. And um, because Sekka's Light was limited on the last Forbidden and Limited list, he's playing three other spells instead. He's playing Foolish Burial, One for One, and Card Destruction. So we'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, he has access to Naturia Beast as well to prevent the Mystic Mind. So maybe uh, he might side in a few end shops like the Ghost Ogre, but it seems like when you're playing such a heavy combo strategy, you probably don't even side them first. Yeah, you just want all your yeah. cards to resolve. Because he's uh, doing something that we have seen yesterday as well, where yeah, you went to uh, yeah, Fossil Dyna and all of this, uh, trying to just get your opponent out of uh, the duel. So his optimal field would be a Fossil Dyna with Avramax and Naturia Beast, yeah, I think. Yeah, probably close to that. He has access to a Beast Dweller as well. Uh, uh, it's not that useful yeah, against Rocket. You prevent maybe one or two summons per turn, but not that much after that. Absolutely. And, uh, um, but if we look, take a look at Jacob's side deck, he's playing three copies of Dark Ruler No More and three copies of Evenly Matched, yeah. which can both deal with the Burning Abyss field. Even the pa yeah, I mean, uh, the Pancreatops is not very useful against the Dyna, but if you get rid of the Dyna with one of your rockets, then it's yeah, pretty useful Yeah, with a normal sum, well. then you can maybe destroy the, the Naturia, uh, Beast. Naturia Beast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely looking like uh, Jacob's deck is uh, more well-rounded. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see, it's still definitely open and uh, uh, a lot of things can happen here. Um, yeah, I don't think there is any option I think that's the second. biggest difference between these two combo decks. Because one has yeah. to main deck 40 engine cards while the other has 30 engine cards and can play more side deck cards, more cards that are adjusted to the meta game. Absolutely. it's. Uh Something we've seen with Spiral as well, like uh, sometimes these decks are just relying on a lot of cards to combo off. I think it's something that you were uh, doing with the Zephra deck as well, right? Uh, yeah, back then Antrops. when I played yeah. Zephra in a field full of Pendulum FTK yeah. decks, I played a combo deck that could main deck nine hand traps and yeah. it worked quite well. So it's something to keep in mind and let's see if it's going to work out for him. Our players have drawn, so let's go back to them. and. Uh, Let's take a look. So, I don't see any side deck cards in the end of uh, Jacob. So, maybe quite an unfortunate one here. He needs to pick it up as the six. Uh, no end traps either. Yes, that's one of the weaknesses of the Rocket deck. It doesn't have any draw power whatsoever. So, 
you really have to hard draw into all your side deck cards. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. He let him go first. Interesting, but this might be actually a punish. He did draw uh, draw and lock. Um, How this useful is one is of it? the uh, only cases where Roll and Lockwood is really good against the Rocket deck if you open the <laughs> yeah. Star Leech yeah. Cypher, because that means you get one search with the Cypher and then your White and Black Dragon and your Striker Dragon search won't go through. But nice, wow, very very bold uh, move. I was I was thinking about it, but like looking at his side deck, I really didn't think he could afford it. But I guess with the he sided in the Kaijus as well, evenly, but. Very brave here from uh, if I Quentin. Look at Jacob's hand. I think he still has full combo through Draw and Lockbird because he opened the World Legacy God Dragon, which yeah. can move the zone of God Dragon LP and Pisty. Yeah, it was incredible with uh, the War Chalice Ib, which unfortunately was uh, forbidden. But you can yeah. still uh, play the art drone copies. No, he passed. Oh, okay. Do you think he, he didn't just see the play you were contemplating, or um, I guess that play is possible, but he would lose a lot of cards in his hand, so he doesn't get a search yeah. with white ring. And if anything else happens, like a ghost ogre or an ash yeah, blossom, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're done. Anything else, then you're done. So he just goes for the safe okay. play. Now we see Farfa, our <laughs> uh, friend and Guest colleague. Uh, is that even signed by him? Might I be. I think it's signed. Is something yeah. on the card? <laughs> it might be signed by him. So. But we won't see a far far effect this turn because it was no. special summon. Okay, so just uh, forcing out the sphere. Oh, and he was afraid of a amorphic sloth or something like that, a floodgate you can summon yeah. with LP because he summoned two monsters before going into battle phase. Absolutely. Uh, it would be interesting to know if he special summon or normal summon the Libic, because otherwise I think it would have made more sense to bounce the far far, right? Yeah, the one that was, I think both were special summons. Probably, yeah. And now he can just normal summon the other one. So yeah, Rocket um, the Heavenly Sphere summons the monster with zero attack and defense. But Rocket Tracer has a quick effect to destroy himself, so he could just destroy himself to summon a stronger rocket monster out of his main deck right now. So that Farfa can't beat over it. Okay, so so yeah, Silver Rocket is stronger than Farfa, so the battle phase probably will end here without any damage taken. Yeah, but now he's pretty much free to continue playing off. Yeah, he did special summon both, so now we're gonna see the Kerubini for the first time in this duel. And what a card, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It pretty Just much gives you access to the whole deck, so... It gives you access to every level 3 monster in the game. Yeah, must be a good one, so... Uh, so he does have the block dragon in his hand already, which is... Yeah, that's why he's yeah. sending Finnish Rhino Warrior, because that's another Earth monster yep. in your graveyard. You want to send as many as possible, and uh, let's see, because... So, like, with these combos, what I'm concerned about is, uh, like, here you really want to snipe the block dragon. Let's see what he is going to get. I think, the, yeah, the danger. And the good part about Kirubin is that it also protects your Burning Abyss monsters from destruction, because otherwise they would be gone right now with the Tsuchinoko. So, like it just it protects any card it points to. It's yeah, really yeah, yeah. strong. So you can even like maybe keep summon it, a yeah. card of, of instant fusion and keep it longer than the end phase. Yeah, it's definitely. So right now powerful. I think he has to dig for more Earth monsters. Yeah, let's see. Okay. So yeah, yeah, he just, just asked why the BA yeah. doesn't die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other effect of uh, Kerubini comes in and here, what is he gonna mill? These are gonna be super important. Yeah, he needs Earth Monsters. Yeah, because right two now he them. only has one, yeah? Yeah, he needs two more Earth Monsters. Can he mill some of them? Okay. One, two, yes! Wow, <laughs> he does! Nice! <laughs> Perfect, just what he needed. And now he even gets something back with Seer, so... Just incredible how Burning Abyss is still valid like six years after it came out. Like, it's just mind blowing to me. Yeah, dude. It's also one of the decks that, decks that doesn't need a lot to be, get going. You just need two level three monsters, and that's your full combo. Yeah. Depending on what you want to do. If you play the 
block dragon deck, you need more earth monsters in your graveyard. Okay. He's so going for Saruja. Saruja, yeah. Going all in for Saruja here, uh, being quite brave because we do know that Jacob was playing a lot of Anchop, so Ash Blossom, he has a lot of potential cards he can use, but he's going to chain block it, of course, yes, with the Dante. Yes, going to put a lot of trigger effects in the same chain, and that way, yeah. so Yuja cannot be responded to by Ash Blossom. Or, yeah. Let's see if he can uh, pick up some of his uh, Dine or, like, very weird cards. Droll and Lock is picked up again, and a Kaiju, I see, but... The drone locket won't be that strong in the second turn. Yeah. But, but the question is, uh, yeah, does Quentin know about that? Maybe he doesn't know the rocket deck that well, so you just try and hope that Droll gets you there. I mean, it will still prevent something, because if yeah. he goes to strike a dragon first, then he can't search with the white yeah. dragon. Okay, so... It's also very dangerous to give a link zone to your opponent when they are playing guard drains because that means they can do their combos with mm. one less monster. So uh, all Salaman great players are always afraid yeah. of guard drains because especially they can't with the uh, legacy wolf. card. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Gallus and Tour Guide, not the greatest target there, but gonna push a little bit of damage. It's not that bad now that Trigger is at two because you yeah. can just search the other copy. Fair enough. Turn. We but saw actually a few players using it in Altergeist as well, just to get the Sangan. I saw. Uh, yeah, Trigger yeah. in Altergeist is quite interesting because you get the Sangan, and yeah. Sangan will give you a search already, so you can either search Multi Faker or mm -hmm. maybe a Hand Trap, and you can link both of them away into Cherubini and search a trap by sending the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting approach to the deck. Uh, we'll see if any of our Ultra Guys players in top cut. Okay, so going in here, Kurios comes down. So again, chain blocking any potential Ash Blossom from his opponent. Uh, and he's gonna do it this way around though, because he doesn't wanna mill the targets from the Black Dragon with the Kurios. And he doesn't search uh, Fossil Diner right here. Maybe yeah. He probably sided it out. Because Maybe because he, he went second. Yeah, yeah, he didn't expect it to be that useful going second. The Sir is milled, yeah. which can bring back another Dante. Well, I think he already used it uh, this turn, right? Yeah. How was the shuffle back in? Do they have a way to shuffle Sir back into the deck? That was, I was thinking, but... I thought he was used already, right? For sure. Yeah, I think so as well. Is it back uh, more than one? <laughs> like, okay, so now the Naturia Beast does come down. Um, card that maybe you not know super well, but... Uh, can it negate the World Legacy spell? No, I, I was, I was okay. checking this, and uh, as you can see, it does not negate cards that are already on the field, so... But it could negate boot sector relaunch next mm -hmm. turn. But this is definitely relevant. Because it would have been uh, even stronger in that case. Uh, doesn't seem to be super impressive here, but maybe... He's summoning the Avramax yeah, with yeah. IP Mascarina, which means it also cannot be destroyed by card effects. Yeah. And going through Jacob's extra deck, I don't think there are that many outs to this Avermax. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely an impressive one, but it does have side deck cards, so if he picked up uh, like the Dark Lunar no more, yeah, it would work. Uh, no yeah. Oh, his top deck was Quick Launch, yeah. which is really bad into Naturia Beast. Absolutely. Is Naturia Beast once per chain? Perhaps? No, once per chain. I don't. Uh, I, I don't think so. Yeah. N no, no, it's, it's not, not even chain. once per chain. Yeah. Okay. So. It's one of the old cards where like once per chain wasn't. They didn't think it was needed back in the day, and yeah, it's tough. So he needs to find an out to this Avramax because, as you can see, already on his own, it's uh, quite strong. Because. <laughs> Okay, and he gives this. Yes, read it. Yeah, I mean, the frustration is real here for Jacob. Uh, uh, 
maybe, as you're saying, he doesn't even see the out. And he, well. I think the only way to out it would be to summon Brawl Sword Dragon and Brawl Lord Savage Dragon at the same time, so that he can negate ever max effect in the damage step. Maybe it's like, yeah, looking at this extra deck. Mm, I mean, it's possible that with the side deck cards, he does have a few outs to it, but. He also has to be quick because Evermax is quite huge and also always deals a lot of damage by attacking. Yeah. But at the same time, Quentin doesn't really have anything left. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the pressure isn't super high. Like if you just try and grind it out like by open to draw into Yeah, if he had yeah. access to the quick uh, to the field spell, he could always summon back yeah. rocket Recycle rockets in defense. Them. Right now he is cut off that from the Denaturia Beast, but maybe he can just destroy the Denaturia Beast and I also think it. he has to make a decision now because yeah, he was he's looking playing at a this little field for a long time. Slow, so and the Weaver Buster comes down. That's smart because he's playing in around the second round lockbird by using Weaver Buster as a link material for striker dragon, so both searches will be on the same chain. If he's doing that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> he's not. He's just not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Going for a Link Chew instead. Uh? Probably Romulus. But like... Yeah, he has used the... Uh... Oh, he's using Corporal Drive. Wow. Maybe not. Because I was thinking in general, like, but he already went through the sphere, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't be too complicated. Uh? Because the sphere is an out to it, right? Yes, it doesn't target. So but like, uh, uh, there's also no way to bring it back into yeah. your extra deck. So it's quite unfortunate because that's gone. And uh, can we look through the deck? Do we see the Dark Clover sided in? I didn't even see I them. I think he sided like, them in. I mean, now the draw comes up. Yeah, but as I said, he already has two searches. Yeah. But he would still need the Striker Dragon somehow. Oh, yeah, oh he, he searched the, Raven. the wrong yeah, yeah, field yeah, yeah. spell. Romulus searches a Dragon Ravine and Ravine, not puts yeah. the launch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too serious. So now he can out the Naturia Beast, to be fair, right? So it shouldn't be too complicated to do that. But No, he can only attack. Ah, because he, yeah, he's going to force the attacks. So yeah, he needs right. a card effect that destroys the Naturia Beast. Yeah, that's true. That's really strong. Wow, then uh, definitely in trouble. I think that's why he was looking for yeah. the quad ball drain because that could just destroy an interior beast. Yeah, that's the weakness of Quentin's field. It doesn't really have any interruption for monster effects and he can just pop off with his god drains. Yeah, it might work against other matchups like the shadows, because without the spells they are not really able to do anything, but in this particular one maybe found uh, his worst possible matchup. Still not super easy. He also hasn't used Rock Trace at this turn yet, so he could just destroy his mm -hmm. God Dragon spell card to summon another monster out of his deck. Okay. Probably going for the like yeah. Yeah, he has to do a lot of link plays to get this dead zone free again. Yeah. So that's. Does he, he realize? No, yeah. he cannot use do that. Uh, that needs two dark dragon monsters. We have to. Okay. Yeah. 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 Call a judge maybe because yeah, they we are probably also don't know the cards. <laughs> um. So I'm, we are gonna quickly try and fix them. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we, our judges are just uh, quickly telling them that. The Delingerous Dragon has to be summoned with Dark Monsters. But he used Romulus. Yeah. So here, as you can see, they're quickly 
fixing it. Luckily, we were able to inform them in time. So plays are rewarded and now rewinded. So okay, so back at it. Good catch and now. Like I was saying, uh, do you think he forgot about the possibility of changing a zone uh, without Naturia Beast, or is not just interested in it right uh, now? I think he forgot about that because he could just move yeah. the mist heat uh, in front of yeah. Evermax and summon in his own where Pisty exactly. is right now. And because he doesn't see that line of play, he is doing a lot of weird link climbing plays yeah. so that he gets a free zone. So I mean, the easiest way would be to just maybe summon Triple Burst Dragon instead of the Lingerous to the upper extra monster zone. Yeah. Now he's going again for Link Chu. Okay, no, yeah, now he does go for the Triple Burst. Okay. Yeah, that seems like it was too complicated for no real reason. Um, now Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon can be used again. And he does have enough monsters to go for Brawl Sword and Brawl Lord Savage yeah, Dragon. That's definitely the line. We'll see but if he. Uh, maybe it. he doesn't see that play. Like maybe yeah. he doesn't realize that you can negate Error Max and other stuff. Because that's not something you go up against every single day. <laughs> no, absolutely. Usually. That's not something yeah. you consider while deck building. Like no. <laughs> most decks do have an out because um, gravity controller, the new link monster yep. from Ignition Assault. Doesn't target as well. No. Doesn't target, it's just like Grand Mall and it can shuffle Evermax back into the, the deck. But yeah, some decks just really struggle. Yeah. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. I mean, back in the day, even like Clifford Towers, it was the same uh, concept. You just. Slam a big uh, monster that's unaffected by pretty much everything, and most decks struggled with that. Oh. Okay, Abomination. And he still didn't use Rocket Tracer, which, yeah. uh, but he has the quick launch in hand. Maybe he tries to pop to destroy uh, Natural Beast first before doing that. So now he discarded. Dragon Ravine to destroy the Lingerous Dragon with Quad Brawl Dragon, that, so he can special summon two rocket monsters from his graveyard, and then the Lingerous Dragon special summon back because the rocket was special summoned. So he got two monsters for free, basically. Yeah, a lot of advantage again, and uh, I think he's uh, definitely going for the play. Yep. Seems like he saw the line. Maybe not in this most straightforward way but he's getting there so he needs one more monster to summon the pro sword dragon because abomination cannot beat over Avermax right now oh bro yeah this is also strong yeah. enough because it gains the attack that's true i didn't see that yeah yeah that's that's even better because you get the alpha of the attack from the monster you equip so it's yeah yeah it's enough so he's gonna negate it with uh, the savage uh, and now we are going to get to use the effect, right? <laughs> so, in the damage step, Abomination triggers because the monster was destroyed by battle. One more. So, he can destroy. But, yeah, the Abramax can get rid of it. Uh, as well. Yeah, so he can prevent some damage. He's going to see what he, he wants to, to send back, but, like, he's completely top decking, uh, only as the block dragon, I believe, uh, of, like, useful cards in his graveyard. Uh, stuff it seems like this rocket deck is just uh, working out uh, perfectly from uh, Jacob and uh, word of advice from anyone uh, watching it and especially our competitors left in the event if you still don't know what these cars do just read them now read them <laughs> now you still have some time if you're into the top cut so okay he selects the savage instead makes sense but now he's gonna take a lot of damage, and uh, I. He also has the quick launch for the battle phase. That might be enough. Maybe it's enough, yeah, potentially. Because that's like 6,000 damage on the field already, and then he can quick launch into Tracer. Yeah, because then Tracer effect to special some something from the deck. He also took some damage with the Abramax, right? So. Yeah, that's it. 
It's, it should be enough. I uh, think. The monster you summon with quick launch cannot attack, but yeah. uh, he could summon the tracer, which can summon another monster. From yeah. yeah. So it, I think he's seeing uh, the lion. Let's see. Does he have the? No. 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 It's. Uh, I mean. He's probably not going to be punished for it, but definitely had uh, his way around here because he's only left at 1200 uh, for Quentin, so... Yeah, he could just pick another card yeah. of Quentin in his end phase with Silver Rocket. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really see how... Especially because he picked second, like, he would need uh, a miracle to <laughs> come out of this. Because he's not the one playing Mystic Mine, right? No. Uh, yeah, because maybe that could Jacob have been... Jacob was playing uh, Mystic yeah. Mine. Maybe that could have been a cool way to come back into the game, but... Not even uh, possible right now. Yeah, it seems uh, like Ye Jacob did everything right. Uh, and uh, now, let's see if uh, Quentin is going to throw that Miracle card. One last draw for him. It seems like it's the C Archiver. C Archiver, yeah. yeah. C Archiver, so... Um, does he have block during left in his grave? Yeah, he can summon that back. Maybe even into the zone of abomination that will trigger C archiver, but that doesn't really Yeah, do I mean, I, I don't think he has <laughs> targets left in the deck even to search for, so... I mean, the set Fossil Dyna would have been fun too, I mean, but it's almost impossible <laughs> that it's gonna work out, so... Uh, yeah. But Abomination can yeah. destroy a card in the end phase. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's why it's like impossible that it happens, but... Okay. <coughs> yeah, Block Dragon comes down once more. Uh, seems like it's an upfield battle for that monster, but... One single Block Dragon against, against 10,000 yeah. monsters. <laughs> exactly. The grind is real, so the Archiver comes down. Uh, um, sure. Let's see. Okay, so now we're gonna see the interaction of the rockets and uh, the abomination. So, yes, he will special summon a rock monster out of his deck if he has any left. Oh, wow. He actually doesn't have any left because he did the, yeah, the other Yeah, Tracer line. cannot summon yeah. Tracer, so you have to summon one with wow. a different name. Well. Yeah, because of basically the, the line that he did. If he did the other way around, uh, hopefully he doesn't have already a warning <laughs> for this, because that would be a bad way to end it, but doesn't seem so. Yeah, that's one of the things of the Rocket deck, because most people only picked it up after Shunping won the UDS yeah. last weekend. They are not that familiar with the cards themselves, so yeah, you I mean, have to enough. be really careful. Yeah, I guess a warning is just a warning, but when you get multiples, then especially near to top cut, it can get ugly, and you really don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, I think yeah, the only link he has left is Phoenix, so I guess a link to you. The cool thing about the abomination is that it also triggers when your opponent destroys cards. Yeah. So, we're still waiting on it. Uh, it seems like they're probably going to check if uh, he received the previous warnings. Uh, yes, it seems that's like the yeah. correct procedure in this case. So, they have to check for his record, for his tournament record. Yeah, but it didn't history. seem like it was anything no. serious, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it changes the game dramatically, even uh, like in this case. It doesn't yeah, seem he couldn't bait any disruptions or anything because. Quentin doesn't have any responses. Yeah, but of course we're just gonna wait and check out if uh, if that's the option. Uh, uh, regardless of this, uh, we can just have uh, a quick chat about the event in general. Like before, we were talking about the event with Alberto, and uh, our pick uh, before the event was Invoke Shadow to win it. Invoke Shadow. Do you okay. have a different uh, pick? What's your opinion? Uh, on I it? don't really like the Invoke Shadow deck okay. because I think it's very reliant on your fusion spells. And if you don't draw your fusion spells, the invoked and shadow cards themselves don't do that much. Yeah. Uh, my pick for the event would be Rocket because okay. I played it myself. <laughs> Fair um, enough. And I think there's still some good Rocket players in the tournament who could win it out of surprise because uh, the other players are still not prepared for it. Yeah, and honestly, if the underdog pick. Yeah. 
if that happened, it would be like very weird in a way because uh, it's like they warned us. So <laughs> they warned us, and we still didn't care, and uh, we got punished for it. So. Uh, maybe the Shumping uh, yeah, legacy can continue this weekend. So. I think another big weakness of the Rocker deck is Mystic Mind, though, because yeah. the only spell trap negate you summon in your first turn is the Savage Dragon, and if they bait it out in any shape, you will lose to Mystic Mind. But to and be honest, it seems like like Mystic Mind was just the weakness of almost everyone's deck. Yeah, that's this the card of the weekend for yeah. sure. Like a lot of people are maining Mystic Mind in different strategies. You don't need burn cards yeah. or uh, effect damage cards to win with Mystic Mind. You just can play it in any deck, in Shadow, in Spiral, yeah. in Alter Guys. We've seen it everywhere. And absolutely, and we've seen it uh, even just as a side deck card. Uh, we have seen people just using the triple copies or even going like hard with the demise of the land and metaverse. So, do you think Mystic Mind got better now that people are playing Lightning Storm and Evening yeah. Match instead of regular spell trap removal like Twin Twisters? I think uh, it definitely is paying off for that reason specifically. Uh, yeah, because, because they all these new cards which are really strong force you to control no face up cards or no cards at all. And yeah. you cannot use them to out Mystic Mine except in like really strange scenarios where you tribute set a monster over yeah, your field and then like use Lightning Storm. But even tough. then, it's yeah really tough. I think that was also one of the weaknesses in my deck because I I kept losing to Mystic Mine oh. and I wish I played like regular Mystical Space Typhoon instead of Lightning yeah. Storm because I couldn't out that. For card. example, Jacob uh, just uh, picked up Shim. Uh, deck and he's playing uh, the triple cosmic cyclone in the main deck. So. Yes, he's playing triple cosmic in the main deck, but in his side deck he doesn't really have out to mystic mind. Yeah, I guess the imperial order and that's it. So. Yes. And one interesting card in his side deck is Crocky Mero Drago. Yeah, that's true. Which is crazy against Shadow. All their monsters are dark or light, most of them. And if you summon Crocky Mero Drago with your heretic seal, Maybe they cannot do anything after that. Yeah, and it is uh, because you can pick yeah. the app cologne. You can uh, banish the app cologne in your turn with a silver rocket, and after that they won't have any uh, wind shadow fusion monsters left if they are only playing one copy. True. And that means Quirky Mero Drago itself can be game. Yeah, and it is uh, what we saw Yego doing, but it seems like our match is back. So let's jump uh, back into it. The Phoenix was summoned, and. Uh, which triggers the archiver because it was summoned into the zone of the And the block dragon, so he does have the targets. Okay, yeah, I thought. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have the best target ever, but... Uh, block dragon can be summoned multiple times in a turn, right? Yeah. So but maybe just the search effect is Yeah, maybe he has enough dark earth monsters left to summon another one. Uh, it seems like he struggled a little in turn one with Earth Monsters, so like he had to get lucky there. So I don't know if he has enough. Well, he's trying his best to be honest, and you can't blame him. Maybe if he has enough, he just because of that mistake from Jacob, it could cost him the game. I think. Now he has to read. Oh, the Lingers Dragon has an effect in the end phase as well. So if the Lingers Dragon survives until Quentin's end phase, it can destroy Nightmare Unicorn if I'm. Re yeah. remembering that correctly. So that effect never comes up, but right now it could be because... Yeah, but it says <laughs> that he didn't declare an attack, right? So it's quite unlikely that that's going to happen. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Probably, uh, <laughs> I guess. I mean, it might happen, but... The correct play would be to destroy Quad Ball Dragon. Let's see. Because Tracer doesn't have an effect right now, and the uh, also yeah. doesn't And do it anything. doesn't seem like he has enough to summon the Black Dragon back, so... I don't see how he gets out of this. Okay. Uh, this triggers Rocket Recharger. Yep. So when a dark extra deck monster is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can send him from your field or from your hand to the graveyard to special summon any dark monsters from the grave. Yeah, but that was it. So uh, he saw enough. So Quentin picks up his card. Unfortunately, loses 2 to Jacob who will most likely advance to top 64. Yes. So we got to, of course, give congratulations to him and uh, feel sorry for Quentin. Still put up a good show for us and uh, hopefully will redeem himself. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting match. We saw once more why you, a uh, pretty famous player, picked the deck for the event. Maybe it didn't go as well for you, but 
for Jacob and many of uh, other duelists. Yeah, there should uh, it's be well. three or four rockets maybe in the top cut. Yeah, so maybe your prediction is going to come true and Rocket is going to take the event. But uh, for the rest, uh, of course, guys, uh, you're going to have to keep watching because now it's where it gets intense. So we're going to have uh, outside of uh, Utrecht uh, like a couple of time ago, which was the YCS 200. It is the first time outside of that event where we have a top 64 for a YCS. So that's going to be exciting. You have even one more round. And next round, hopefully, we will show you the deck breakdown for top 64. Yes. Which I think is going to be one of the widest for uh, any event, right? Yeah, I can't really predict it. Like, we yeah. still had a lot of spiral, but the other category was the biggest category going into round 12. So there could be anything in top Yeah, it was um, literally just walking through the deck. Any, any, anything can go up there. And uh, still, as I was saying, a lot of action. We are going to just check who is doing well. There are also some big names uh, and big competitors going for the World Championship points. Because let's remember, this, by being a top 64 event, is going to award even more points. Yes, the first place will receive 96 points, yeah. if I'm correct. Exactly, so it's a big deal. And uh, this is the last YCS before national season, so yes. the last chance for getting some points. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining us. Maybe we will see more of you. But anyway, now Luke is ready with the winner, Jacob. So let's go to them for the interview. Thank you very much, Marcello. I am here with Jakob. I did get his name right. He just couldn't hear us on the stage, right? Yeah. I, got, I, I pride myself on getting people's names yeah, yeah. right because I'm awful with, with pronouncing people's names. You got it perfect, so it's... Yes! Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about that match. There, there, was, there was a lot of fans in, in, the, in the crowd for the, for the opposing player. Was that a little bit intimidating? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of it was also the, the cameras and the high stakes of the match. Uh, I even uh, the recharge I used on the last of his turn, I had for game on my own turn, but I just forgot I had it in hand. And instead of winning, I just like didn't. didn't win. Yeah, so I was just sitting there when we had the judge was like, just sit there in my own misery, knowing that I could have won like seven minutes ago. Yeah, so that was bad. A bit of intimidation from both the cameras and the opponent. Yeah, I mean that. I say this all the time on the live stream that you you don't know what it feels like until you've actually done it. it you, you know, you can never predict what it yeah. feels like. I've only done a written feature before, and it's quite different. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of kind of preparation, and you know, yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of the right word, but you know, there's a lot of production value to to the feature match instead of just a written one. Yeah, there's a lot of production value. There's a lot of viewer and fan value for the people out there. It's much better than the written features, uh, but it's also way more intimidating. So. So I think that that victory will mean that you're probably going to the top cut. I mean, maybe. I think so. I, I think X21 is not guaranteed. So uh, X21 is probably not guaranteed. So I'm hoping, but that's a risk I'm not in. Yeah. It always depends on the number of draws because the, the more people who draw above you, kind of pushes you out of the out of the, the standings. But um, I think we did work it out earlier that some X3s will top. So in theory, you will be above them. Yeah, but when you do the calculations with X3s, it doesn't take into account all the fringe situations you get with draws in a tournament because it, it's, it messes up the entire structure from round one to the last round, including people who doesn't drop but then doesn't show up. All these kind of things messes up the tiebreakers for people. So, I mean, if you want to top it, it's just to obviously win a lot and lose in the end if you are going to lose. Honestly, I'm just trying to get you a little bit excited about it, but you're, you're keeping yeah. it cool. You're keeping it cool. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. Uh, it's easier if you like mellow out your expectations. You don't get as uh, distraught or annoyed afterwards if it doesn't work out. But it would be awesome if it did work out. So yeah, it, if my name's up there, you'll see my arms in the air. Okay. Well, maybe maybe you can come back here and we can do it again, and you could be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. What, what what do you think? So you know, let's let's pretend for a second that you've got to play a few more games of Yu-Gi-Oh for some reason yeah. in, in the rest of the tournament. Um, what, what would you say is your worst matchup? Um, I mean, I don't like the Shidal matchup. It's very coin tossy. Uh, it's a lot about who starts and it's a lot about who gets to set up their uh, good locks for the matchup. And when you do game one, we have the slightly weaker lock against them because if they can do Winda and then have the backup access to Winda, it's insanely hard to beat for my deck. And vice versa, if I get to set up, it's quite difficult for them, but it's more doable. Uh, after side dig, it becomes really close, uh, and it's very much draw dependent. So that's a high amount of variance. 
whereas against a lot of the other decks you have way more play to it. Like with this matchup, even though I, he made me go first when I was like, I sat in a couple of cards for going second as well and I didn't have my Drago from my side deck, I still had a lot of playability after he did his combo on me. Uh, so that's one of the strong points of the deck, but it's also one of the weak ones because you don't make as strong boards as like the spiral deck. You said so. You, you you alluded to it a little bit there about the side deck. So what, you know how, what would you how, you know how how much of a, a chance do you think that side deck gives you in that matchup? You know what 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 cards are you including that that improve those chances? Uh, I mean, there's the floodgate cards. Obviously, I have the anti spells and the imperial order, just like Shun Ping from the UDS. Uh, Shun Ping is a friend of a friend of mine, and they made the deck together and taught me. So I actually knew about it before he won. So the deck is pretty good. Uh, even when you uh, mess up like I did, it's pretty strong. Um, but yeah, you also have other cards that maybe helps you cheese out some wins. Uh, you also have like the Drago, which makes the Heretic Seal really, really good against them, because if all they have is normal summon, you force the battle phase with the Seal, uh, and then you get out the Drago, it forces the rest of the turn. Uh, I've had opponents uh, main an extra deck specific outs for this situation, which was obviously annoying. Uh, they're not as versatile for other matchups, but they really do help against me. So, yeah. You, you just uh, you said something that is quite interesting. You know that you you are still able to win with this deck even after making a few mistakes. Do you think that you do have to build your deck with a tournament that's going you know 12 rounds with that in mind that you, you know you are going to make some mistakes throughout the way? You know, is that something you think about when making deck? Uh, I think a lot of the really strong players and maybe also some of the younger players, they have more uh, longevity throughout the tournament, playing at their highest level. Uh, but some of us also have like lapses in judgment underway. Uh, so it's really important to have something where you have all your backup lines set and it's not non-linear for every single thing you do. Like uh, Also my opponent with the Block Dragon deck, um, they have a lot of different combos, but they all ball down, bound down to doing the same amount of things with the same cards a lot of the time, which means you have something to go up to when you're in a situation where like, oh, I don't have time to think, or I'm a bit, you know, I didn't get enough water, I'm dehydrated, whatever. Uh, so it depends on the player, but it's definitely an advantage for me to have something to lean up against. We, we were talking with, um, just yesterday, one of, the, one of the feature matches was a Gemini FTK player. I don't know if you, yeah. you caught that one, but uh, he was saying something similar that, you know, we, we discussed about how there's kind of an end goal to the deck, but the route to get there, there's quite a few different routes. Yeah. Do you feel that your deck's similar? Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, you can see in the feature match, I did the combo with the double arrows down with the LP and the Striker Dragon, which a lot of people don't do. They go directly for the LP Pisty, which means you A, you don't get the surge of the Striker Dragon to the hand for another discard. Uh, it also means you're very weak to something like Ghost Ogre. So even though it's like minute differences, you play around a lot more cards when you do it the right way, and you get a better position. Uh, we also added the Black Metal Dragon, which searches out the Red Eyes without a discard like the Brotar, uh, which means if you have hand traps you don't want to discard, don't go for the Brotar play, go for the Red Eyes. The Red Eyes is also a one-card combo like the Cypher. It does lose out to like, draw and lock birds. So having the different routes is good, but they shouldn't be so different that it's hard to distinguish in-game. Yeah, so it may yeah, you've got to be able to know kind of where you're going to go with them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's so that's it for for the Swiss portion of the event. Thank you so much for for the interview. For you guys at home, this is probably going to be a little bit longer of a break because you know there's various things that have to be done. We got to rearrange the venue a little bit to to accommodate for the top cut. So go and you know grab some refreshments and prepare for the showdown that is the top 64. See you guys soon.